Hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how to plan a Windows Forms application. So essentially all the work that you should be putting into actually figuring out what your form does before you actually start trying to create it. So the material that we will be covering is um, F2.1, which is about planning a Windows Form application, and A2.1, uh, creating a planning chart for a Windows Forms application, all of this being in Chapter 2 in the textbook. Now, like last week, I do actually want you to go through the apply the concepts part of the textbook because it is really good practice and the book is actually guiding you through and showing you good examples of how to do it. I want you to follow along with that work. Um, so while I kind of cover that material that's in there, um, at least in this video, I don't cover every single thing that's in the apply the concepts part of the textbook. While I'm covering A2.1, that's mostly because A2.1 is actually following through uh, making an example from the material in F2.1. So do look through A2.1. Um, actually, do look through all of the Apply the Concepts parts of the chapter because they're really helpful. In particular, I do not cover A2.3 and A2.4 because, you know, they're, they essentially cover different properties of different controls and it didn't seem super necessary for me to give that in video form when you could just look it up in the textbook and take the notes and reference them yourself. Either reference your own notes or reference what's in the textbook. I want to actually take more time to focus on the core concepts of this lesson. So that's my whole spiel for why you should do the Apply the Concepts lesson. I really do recommend going through all of them in all of the chapters that we end up covering because they're really good practice for you. And me just following along in the video uh, just doing it all for you is not going to be nearly as valuable as you doing it yourself. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Whether you are an everyday visual basic programmer or a megalomaniacal um, super villain type of visual basic programmer trying to take over the world using Windows Forms, no matter what, you always should be planning out your applications before you actually start working. Last week I mentioned this idea of cowboy coding, where you just go out and you start coding, you start slapping things together, and you just try to build your solution as you go. And believe me, from personal experience, that's not the right way to do it, specifically because you lose hours and hours of time due to creating the wrong thing sometimes, or making a lot of mistakes that you could have possibly prevented by knowing ahead of time exactly what you were going to do. All that kind of stuff. It causes a lot of problems, and anybody who starts to learn how to program will eventually reach a breaking point if they weren't planning from the very beginning, which you should be, but if they weren't planning from the very beginning, you reach a breaking point where you realize this has gone catastrophically wrong and I should have planned it from the start, and you actually start outlining everything that your program should do ahead of time. So it's really important to plan. You know what your application should do before you start. It helps you stay on track as you work on your application so you don't veer off into any unplanned directions that aren't actually helpful for what you're trying to do, the problem that you're trying to solve. It helps you make sure your application actually solves the problems it's supposed to, kind of like what I just said. It makes it easier and faster to create your application because you already know what you're supposed to be doing. So you don't have to create a little bit of code and then try to figure out where you're going and then maybe try some things and realize, oh, this isn't right, any of that kind of stuff. You don't need to worry about that because you know what direction you're going in. You know what your program is supposed to do and you know how to go in that direction. And it reduces errors because you're not carelessly 
slapping down code, you're actually being very careful in the execution. You're being very careful in how you create your program. And uh, I didn't put it here because you're not really getting super into debugging yet, but it helps fix errors as well. When you have things going wrong in your program, maybe your program isn't doing the right thing. It's not uh, behaving the right way where, you know, maybe you're trying to do some sort of calculation and you're accidentally doing the wrong calculation because you put in the wrong value somewhere or something like that. Having that plane helps you understand, okay, well, what is going wrong? How is it different from what is what it's supposed to do? And then it makes it a lot easier to find out in your code where things are diverging. You know, the mistake that you made that started to make things go wrong. So that's really helpful. Also, if you have any sort of errors regarding just things completely refusing to work whatsoever, um, having a plan and trying to find that source of all the problems, you know, that's all really helpful in making sure that you have a perfectly functioning and correctly working program. A program that actually runs and it does the thing that it's supposed to do. Now there's a number of different methods that you can use in order to try to plan out a program. And in other classes, uh, if you have taken other computer science you know, programming type classes before this, you might have heard of pseudocode or using flowcharts or anything like that. And those are absolutely fantastic ways of planning out a program. If you're already familiar with them, I suggest that you do use them. Um, the planning method that we're going to be using here though is a little bit different and it kind of works really well for the style of creating applications that actually comes along with Visual Basic because uh, creating a Windows form using Visual Basic is funny enough a very visual kind of process. You can actually design things pretty visually by, you know, creating your form and then placing different controls all over that form. Uh, you design all of that pretty visually and then uh, modify the different controls that you have placed in order to actually create your application. So um, with all that in mind, uh, the textbook uses a different method of planning that actually works really well for this more uh, visually inclined method of creating programs. So let's actually go through the different steps of planning out a Windows form application using this method at least. So I'll give a very brief overview of each of these uh, planning steps because we'll actually go into each of these steps in greater detail uh, as we go along. But the steps are, first off, you identify the application's purpose. Then you identify the items that the user must provide in order to make the application work. Often an application is going to ask users to put, give it values or interact with different parts of it, you know, different buttons or sliders or whatever in order to actually you know, make the application do something so the user will be providing their own input. Um, then uh, in your planning, you identify the items that the application must provide. So things like, you know, output values. When the user asks the application to do something, if the application provides a value for the user um, that might count or things that the application provides that the user can interact with or all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of options there. Then in step four, you take those identified items in steps two and three, and you determine how the user and the application will provide their respective items. And that's, you know, getting a little bit into the detail of implementation of like, what in the code am I going to do in order to um, make the application provide all of these different items or allow the user to provide certain items. 
And then finally, you draw a sketch of the user interface and you make sure that the user interface looks nice and conforms to some uh, graphical standards that we'll talk about uh, in a later video. But you draw a sketch, maybe draw a few sketches, kind of iterate through the process until you come up with a nice example. But you, you draw that sketch. And then, once you have all that, you have the sketch of the user interface, so you know um, where all of those controls are going to be placed, and you know what they're all going to do. So, um, you know, you know what the user is going to interact with, you know what buttons are going to be there, you know where, what all the places, you know, everything is going to be located, uh, all of the places where the user can provide input, all the places where the application can provide output, um, any images you're going to use as well, or like the placement of any images that you want to use, you know all of that. And by the time you have that sketch of the user interface, that sketch is actually going to pretty much inform a lot about the form and what it's doing, the input it's taking, the actions it's doing, and the output that it's delivering back to the user. So once you have all that, then you have your application planned and you are ready to go. Now there's a lot of details between all of these different steps, especially in um, step five, drawing a sketch of the user interface can get into a lot of detail about how to actually make a good graphical interface how to, um, you know, conform to all those different standards. So five is going to be in a later video. In this video, we are focusing on steps one through four. So this is the um, planning chart that the textbook actually uses. I've recreated it in PowerPoint, but we can actually use this chart in order to plan out our Windows Forms applications. And I actually have put up on Canvas a couple of example planning charts that you're able to use for your own planning purposes if you so choose. They should be under the um, module that contains all the helpful resources and whatnot. So that is there for you to use. But we have right here the planning chart for um, you know a certain application. You put the application's name up here. Uh, you give it a purpose. You list all the different tasks, all the user provided and application provided tasks, and then you figure out how each of those are going to be accomplished, very much like the steps that we just identified for the planning process. In fact, each one of those little areas actually um, is uh, associated with a particular task. So what I'm actually going to do is go through an example application and fill out that planning chart so that we can learn how to use this chart in order to plan out the application before actually starting it. So the example application we will be working with is a restaurant tip application uh, because we usually think of tips when we eat out or even, you know, um, tips for any type of service that is usually tipped for, we usually think of them as percentages. You, know, you might have heard that 20% is a good amount to give um, as a base minimum for good service at a restaurant or something like that, but people might give anywhere between 15% to 30% or even higher, depends on who that person is. However, Restaurant tips may be hard to calculate. For example, 17% of a $16.93 purchase, pretty hard to calculate. 25% of $35.27 is pretty hard to calculate. 35% of $58.28 is also pretty hard to calculate. So we could try to make an application in order to help patrons calculate tips. So the first step is to identify the purpose, which we already kind of have talked about, right? The idea is that we have an application that someone who has, say, eaten at a restaurant and is trying to calculate their tip can actually 
use. So we'll actually put that down as the purpose right here. Um, the purpose is to calculate and display a server's tip. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out what the user actually provides for this application, because how is the application supposed to calculate the tip if they don't know how much the meal actually costs or how much the user actually wants to tip, whether they want to tip 20% or 25% or 30% or whatever it is. So that all is information that the user has to provide. And we'll actually write that down on our chart right here. The user will provide the bill amount and the tip percentage, just like that. They will provide that to the form and the form is going to take that information and use it in whatever calculations it needs to. So that's what the user provided values are, is you know all the information that we are getting from the user, whether they're inputting in the amount that it cost you know, the amount that the meal actually cost and the tip percentage, or if they are making different choices with pressing different buttons or whatever, any way that the user actually has to interact with the application in order to get a solution um, is going to be included in here. We don't need to worry about uh, every single thing, so we don't need to worry about the user clicking on some button that says calculate or something like that. That would be you know, we would assume that the user would have to click on a button like that. We don't necessarily need to explicitly include that. It's more like, what information do we need from the user? Do they need to make any sort of choices? Do they need to provide any sort of numbers? Anything like that. That's what we're thinking about in this step. And what's important to note is that we are not worrying about how we're going to get that from the user just yet. We're just worried about what do we need from the user in order to actually solve this problem. We'll worry about the how later. Now the next part is to identify what the application provides. So this is what we are going to put into our application that provides functionality for the application. So it might be something like, uh, what we are putting in in order to deliver information back out to the user. So for example, we would give the user the amount that they would have to actually pay for the tip. We would calculate the tip, calculate how much money that tip is, and deliver that back to the user. We might also uh, include functionality like exiting the application. If the user is done working with the application, they need a way to close it out. So that's the two main functionalities of the application that specifically the application itself is doing. It calculates and returns the uh, amounts that you should give the server as a tip, and it exits the program. Those two functionalities right there are the key functionalities of our application. So we will put in that the application provides the calculated tip back to the user, and it also provides an exit button. Note that I'm not actually including a button that says calculate or something like that, a button that the user presses in order to actually do the calculation. And the reason why I don't worry about that here is because that's already covered by this calculated tip area. Um, Sure, the calculation will actually be triggered by pressing a button, but the point of pressing the button is to actually calculate the tip, which we're already worrying about by giving that calculated tip back out to the user. That all kind of gets caught up in the implementation side of things, which we're not worrying about just yet. We're not worrying about how the user is going to get the calculated tip. Instead, we're just worrying about making sure that we include in the design that the user gets the calculated tip. Now, in this case, we do actually include the exit button specifically because that in and of itself is a unique functionality that's not covered by anything else. It, um, you know, one of the behaviors that it needs to do is to exit. So we have to make sure our application provides 
the exit button that then exits the program. So that's going to be important to include in your planning is making sure that you have a way of exiting the program. Uh, you include it in your plan so that you're always sure that you've included your exit button in the program. Exit buttons are important. We don't want programs running forever on users' computers. If they can't close their, a program on their own computer, that's bad. It makes us look bad. So always include an exit button. But regardless, uh, this is the step where we identify what the application provides. Uh, we figure out what functionality the application has and you know what parts of those functionalities are actually handled by the application itself. It provides a calculated tip to the user and it's actually doing the calculation itself. So um, we would count that as an application provided uh, task or functionality. And of course, in this step, we don't worry about how we calculate the tip or what triggers the calculation of the tip or anything like that. We don't worry about any of that just yet. We're almost there. But, you know, step three, we just worry about the application provided tasks. And now we move on to step four, where we determine how each of the items that we identified in steps two and three are actually provided. So we have the things that we need to get from the user, the ways that the user needs to be able to interact with the application, and the things that our application itself needs to provide to the user. You know, it, it needs to actually um, handle certain functionalities and get those to the user. Uh, we have all of that information and now this is where we start worrying about how are we going to provide all that information to the user. So how do we actually collect from the user the bill amount and the tip percentage? When we provide information to the user, how are we providing the calculated tip to the user? How are we actually doing the calculation? And how do we know when to start doing the calculation? Because if you start trying to do the calculation immediately, you're going to get possibly some invalid values like zero dollars if the user hasn't put anything yet, or um, it might give uh, bad tip values based on if the user is still typing in their values and we're trying to calculate the tip based on those typed in values, we're giving them bad information as they're still typing and it might annoy them or maybe even mislead someone if they accidentally type something in wrong and then see, oh, well, I have a number already calculated, so I'll just grab that, all that kind of stuff. So we need to think about all of this kind of stuff. How, how do we know when to actually calculate the tip and how do we display it to the user? And of course, how do we exit from the program? So when we're actually getting information from the user, the way that we're going to collect that information is from text boxes. And in this step right here, when we're, let's say we're focusing on how to get the bill amount from the user, we need to assign a specific text box for that bill amount collection. So we designate a text box, say, hey, this is the one that takes the bill amount and we add it into our application. So the way that we signify that we're going to do that on the planning um, sheet right here is in the how section, we say that the user will enter the bill amount in text bill. Remember, this is using that naming scheme that we talked about in chapter one. The TXT refers to the fact that we're using a text box. A text box is something that the user can put information into and we can get that information from. And then after that, we say bill because it is the text box that takes in the bill amount. So text bill immediately tells me this is the text box that takes in the bill amount. But that's what we're putting in the how section of this is that uh, the user provides the bill amount, how? Well, they will enter it into the text box for the bill amount, text bill. Already we know that we need 
a text box that we're going to name text bill, put that in the name property, and we're going to collect the bill information from there. And that'll be useful for the calculation part where we actually take that information from text bill and we do stuff with it. Similar stuff with the tip percentage right here. Uh, the user will enter in the tip percentage. So they're going to, uh, we're going to use text percentage right here. The text box for the tip percentage. We have the bill and the percentage text box. So that's how we will um, handle getting user provided information like this, uh, specifically when they are entering in numbers or words or whatever, when they're actually typing something in, we'll be using text boxes and we'll be putting in uh, little statements like this under the how column. Now for the application provided, that one is going to be a little more interesting. So we let's say we have the user, they have entered in a value into the bill. Maybe they put in $40 and they put in a value for a text percentage, uh, maybe 20% or something like that. How are they going to signal to the application, hey, I'm ready for you to calculate my tip. And then once they signal it, and you know, we can abstract out the idea of us calculating it for now, we don't need to worry about that part in the planning stage yet, but once we receive that signal and we have actually calculated it, how do we show it back out to the user? So that's the idea that we're talking about or that we're thinking about right here. How do we know when the user is ready? How, how can they signal to us that it's time to take the values that they've put in and actually do the calculation with? And then how do we display it back out to the user? Because that's a very important part as well. The user actually has to be able to see the uh, result of the calculation so that they can use it. That's the whole point of this is that they need to be able to see the result and use it. So we can take both of those ideas and put them into one statement. Um, button calc underscore click will calculate and display in label tip. This is a bit of a meaty one. I'll try to break it down a little bit. We have button calc using the naming scheme we know that this is a button that is probably doing some calculations. That's what I would imagine calc would be short for. So button calc is the button that the user presses to signal that it's time to calculate. And like before, what uh, you saw in chapter one is that we had this button calc or for all the buttons that we had seen before, um, like the button show and the button hide and the button exit for the Einstein program, they all had button show underscore click uh, procedures that were activated when those buttons were clicked using that whole handles um, click thing that we saw before. So we would have a similar procedure, button calc underscore click in this case, because this is what happens when button calc is actually clicked. Um, button calc underscore click inside of that procedure. Once we're in that procedure, we know that, okay, any statement that's running inside of this procedure is specifically running because the calculate button was clicked, which means that the user must want to calculate it. So all of those statements should be all about calculating the tip. We don't worry about that just yet. And then actually displaying it. So inside of button calc underscore click, calculate, and then use a label to display it to the, um, to the user. Now a label, is going to be different than a text box. Um, a text box is an area in an application where a user can actually type in text. It's a, a box where they can put text into. A label, however, uh, the user cannot actually interact with. The label has text and we use labels to actually describe different areas of the application, like describe a text box or 
provide um, some sort of explanatory text or something like that. But the user can't actually interact with them. They can really just look at them. However, our code, our program, is actually able to change what a label says, which means that we can use labels to actually display the results of our calculation. So label tip right here is going to be the label that actually displays the, um, the tip amount, the uh, dollar amount of the tip rather than the percentage. So inside of the button calc underscore click procedure, we put all the code to calculate the actual dollar amount for the tip, and then we take that result and display it using label tip. And that's a whole idea. Um, this how sentence shows how we are able to calculate and display the tip by, um, uh, by saying, well, you know, we must need a button to signify when we are calculating. So we have to, we have to have a button called button calc, and that has to have a button calc underscore click procedure that tells us when the user has clicked so that we can calculate and display the tip inside of that procedure. And then it also uh, shows us that we need a label to display the tip in, and we're going to call that label tip. So that one sentence actually gives us a, a pretty good idea of this pretty major implementation part of our program. And then for the exit button, um, all we have to put here is that button exit underscore click, again, the procedure of a button, in this case, button exit, um, that when the button is clicked, runs a whole bunch of statements. And in this case, we will close the application using me.close. But that's all we have to really say for button exit underscore click. Uh, button underscore click will end the application. And that's that functionality right there. So this is the first four steps of planning out the restaurant tip application. Uh, from all of this planning that we've done, we have actually gotten a pretty good idea of the implementation for this application, but we're not quite there yet because the last thing that we have to do is step five of the process, which is to plan out the GUI. We need to actually plan out what the application is going to look like. And that is pretty involved, so it is its own separate video. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. So this was the first four steps in the textbooks method for planning a Windows Forms application. Um, this is a pretty useful method, especially for the more visual style of creating applications that you get through Visual Basic. And I highly recommend that you do this for the applications that you make, including for all of your programming assignments and all that kind of stuff. If you take the time to do this, it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run. And honestly, if you have this on hand and you run into some problems with one of your applications and you need help from me, if you can send me your plan for the application, that makes it a lot easier for me to help. Right away, I can make sure that you're on the right track and say, okay, does your plan look like a good plan for this application? Or is there something you're missing? Or maybe you uh, put down uh, a task that needs to be completed, but that doesn't actually need to be completed, right? So it lets me look at that right away and see if that might be a problem. And it also lets me cross-reference that when I'm looking at your code and making sure that everything is lined up and that might help me find some errors really fast as well. So I highly recommend you do that for every application that you make. I won't require it, but it will make your life a lot easier and it will make uh, my life and thus your life a lot easier if I'm helping you out. Uh, like I said before, I have some sample uh, plans planning sheets on the canvas. Uh, they should be under the um, module with all the resources in them. And I'll also have them linked on the canvas page for this video. So take a look. Um, 
yeah, that is the first four steps.